tuning in for another D6 pack video. Today I'm going to be going over the game Whistle Stop and the Rocky Mountain expansion, which Adrian and I are going to be playing tomorrow night, April 30th at 8 p.m. on Twitch, so please join us for that. And with that, let me get to the game. So there is a lot of setup to this game. Uh, but I have most of it done here. Uh, you've got all your resources off to the side, stocks are over here. Uh, you have some train upgrades, and then there are three tiles placed from the bag at random. And then for player setup, each player gets a hand of three tiles. They get a set of trains, which is gonna be dependent on the player count, as well as coal which is also going to depend on player order and one whistle per person then to start the game each player is going to place their trains out here using a switchback sort of mechanism but uh, I'm not actually gonna take the time to set those out there strategically so I'm just gonna kind of shake them up and randomly place them along this then as far as game play goes each player will usually be using coal or whistles in order to move. You can use up to four, which is shown on your player board. So you'll take one of your coal and you'll place it onto your player sheet. And that will allow you to move your train forward from the current stop that it's on to the next. So it could go from here to here. And then you would take whatever resource is on the space that you're stopping on and add that to your player board. There are 10 shaded spaces on your player board which show the limit of how many resources each player can hold. If you are moving your train through a tile that is not where it's stopping, so for example if blue is moving through here, he would then play another tile in order to have a place that he can stop on. So he would then continue to move to there. Um, and you can continue to do that, but your hand limit is three. So if you can't play a tile in order to move a train beyond those three tiles, then you're stuck. The other way of movement that you have is to use one of your whistles, which allows you to move either one or two spaces in any direction. So the coal only allows you to move forward. However, whistles will allow you to move backwards as well. So for example, this train could go one, two spaces. In addition to the movement, the other option that you have is to purchase one of these upgrade tiles, the cost of which is shown on the top of the tile. So this one is any two common resources. And these upgrade tiles are going to give you some sort of special ability that you can use. And you'll tuck those in underneath your player board, showing that you have control of it. If you have control of those at the end of the game, they are worth a number of points, which is shown at the top of the gear as well. You can steal those away from other players by repaying the cost of that tile, as well as one additional advanced resource, which are the red, green, and blue cubes to the player that you're stealing the tile from. Now there are a couple of special tiles that I want to cover here. You'll see that there are these town tiles which will give you points. Let me show you a little closer. Um, so there are two resources shown on either side of that town tile and when you enter that tile, if you have those resources, you can turn those in in order to get that many points. If you don't have those resources, you can still go through the tile. However, you'll receive the negative points which are shown at the bottom of the tile. If you do use the resources in order to cross through that tile, you get the lowest number resource of the matching type of stock. So for example, this one is Rolling Thunder. And if this is the first time anyone is crossing through that tile, they will get the number one stock that is shown of that type and they will keep that next to their player board 
at the end of the game, whoever has the majority of each type of stock will get 15 points. And if there is a tie for majority, the tie is broken by whoever has the lowest number stock. So basically whoever gets there first is going to break the tie. Additionally, Rocky Mountain adds these spaces in the middle of the board here. In order to cross the Rocky Mountains, there is a little bit of an additional cost. So for example, this space requires you to spend one extra coal in order to move in there. However, you also get a reward, which in this case is going to be any advanced resource of your choosing. Uh, these higher spaces require higher costs, but also give you greater rewards. So you'll get both an advanced resource and a gold, which gold are just straight points at the end of the game. They range in points from three to six points. There are also some tiles which just give you a reward. For example, this coal yard just gives you two coal just for entering that tile. Trading post allows you to trade resources for other resources. And then the last special tile that I want to cover are these end tiles. When you get a train all the way across the board, these work kind of like your town tiles. You're turning in these types of resources in order to score this many points. And then once you've done that, you move your train over here to take the resources that are shown on whatever space you're going to cover up. Um, so, for example, the first one here is you get two whistles and anything. So it can be another whistle, it can be an advanced resource of your choice, or a basic resource of your choice. Don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could. So the game continues like that, scoring points as you go. And each round, players will get additional coal added to their supply so that they can continue doing actions. Once you've played out all of the rounds based on player count, so for two players it's going to be the entire round track. Once you've played all of those, you will do some final scoring. You'll get a couple of points for whatever resources or tokens are left in your supply, and you'll lose points if you have any special tiles in your hand. And at that point, whoever has the most points wins the game. So that's Whistle Stop. Um, the game is a lot of fun. Adrian and I played this one at Dice Tower Con a couple of years ago, and we immediately fell in love with the game. I believe we bought it on the spot, or... No, I don't think it was for sale yet then, but we bought it soon after, as soon as we could. Um, this one made my game of the year that year, and then last year they added the Rocky Mountain expansion at Gen Con, I believe. And the Rocky Mountain expansion just adds quite a bit more variety into the game, which really livens it up, and it also makes those gold tokens a lot easier to get, and that is a lot of fun in my opinion, so... Um, having the stock mechanic is a really neat way in order to increase the scoring opportunities, but at the same time there is a simplicity in the amount of actions that you can take in this game. It's basically just move and do what you're ending on. So um, I really like that. This game is a lot of fun. Um, I haven't played it a ton, but I've played it enough to know that I really like this game. Um, and I hope that you will come and check it out and see what your opinions are on the game as Adrian and I play this one on Twitch tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And with that, thanks for watching. Bye.